What's up all you funky dollars? Check it out. I'm very crazy excited about this video. We're going to be talking about my Jack Dempsey breeding project. Not just my, any Jack Dempsey breeding project. My electric blue and my pink Jack Dempsey breeding project. I'm going to go over what I've done so far to get them to breed. Um, tank conditions, water conditions, food conditions, all of that stuff. And I'm also going to go over a couple of mistakes that I think I've made. Please watch the end of the video and let me know if you can spot the mistakes and uh, let me know how you can make him better. I, I don't know. You're just gonna have to watch. You're just gonna have to watch. Conditioning my Jack Dempsey's to breed. First of all, you need to get a male and a female. Um, I've done a quickie three minute video um, where I go over that a little bit, but let me let me go over it. Pretty much, if you're getting regular Jack Dempsey's, your male is normally, the blue is gonna stop about right there, whereas the female, the blue comes around to the bottom of, bottom of the chin. Plus, the male has long threads coming off of his dorsal fin, that fin on the back, and a female does not have that long dorsal fin. It's kind of just, you know, just like that. Now, I have electric blue Jack Dempsey, so the blue is all over the place, and the pink Jack Dempsey, well, you can tell that that's a female just by the dorsal fin. She doesn't have any blue to, to go off of on the chin part, but I know it's a female. So what I did was, I had the electric blue Jack Dempsey. The reason why I'm doing this is because I had a, a Jack Dempsey that was a crossbreed from electric blue and a pink Jack Dempsey in the past, and it got murdered. So I'm trying to replace it. Now, waiting around till one pops up, was gonna take forever. So I thought I'd take matters in my own hand and I have this 46 Planet Tank. Now a lot of people think you shouldn't have Planet Tanks with aggressive cichlids, but I've been doing it and obviously I'm having success with it because I got spawning going, I'm gonna let you see all, I'm gonna let you see all this. So um, I got the 46, which by the way, I suggest if you're breeding Jack Dempsey's, use, use a 55. This is what I had, this is what it is. Planet Deep Substrate Tank um, and the Jack Dempsey's a loving life in there, right? So. The way I conditioned them was first of all, um, let's talk about the setup. I went ahead and put a little cave back there because when I first put the female in, the male was a little bit aggressive. That little cave back there was just big enough for the female to back in there and keep him away. Now, she is probably, I give her at least six inches. No, no, not even. I'm terrible with sizes. One, two, three. Let's give her four, and I'm gonna give the guy a good, uh, the male a good five inches, and I'm gonna show you in a second. And uh, that's that's even though they're not full grown, where the male gets to about eight and the female gets around um, six ish, they're still big enough to breed. So I put her in there. There's plenty of hiding spaces for her. There's plenty of zigzagging places so that they can, you know, not have line of sight and he can, she don't have to be bothered. Well, they did do some lip locking. Now, if it was fighting, what you would see would be one fish would lip lock. They would lip lock, but when one would back off, the other one would continue to just tag, 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 tag. tag. That wasn't happening. It was just mutual back and forth. So nobody was really getting too hurt. A little bit of scuffs on their face, but it's kind of foreplay for them, right? Um, the temperature. I at first when I first had this tank, I had the temperature kind of high. I had it at 82, which they like it at 82. They'll live fine at 82, but it really wasn't rocking for their um, breeding purposes. So I took it down to 78, right? I also fed them a heavy diet of high protein foods. I have these little pellets right here. Um, these pellets are high protein pellets. And I also gave them um, fresh popcorn shrimp that I cut up, I would throw in there, but you know, they kind of looked at it weird. So I did this right here. Um, this Acreon, it's like a monster fish medley. Basically all it is is freeze dried crickets and mealworms. But I did that. I also did um, cool water changes, which when, when I say cool water changes, I'm not saying freezing cold, but I'm not saying like if it's 78 degrees temperature, don't don't do, don't do 77 degrees temperature. No, bring it down, bring it down to room temperature. You know, um, I keep my house kind of. He's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. Cold. Well, for Florida, 73 is kind of cold. 73, 74. So yeah, it was down to like 73 degrees, um, and I would basically bring the tank down 50 percent and then um, put 73 degree water in it. Some people might say, that's too much of a drastic change. Um, well, you gotta figure, it has 78 degree water in it. I put 73 degrees, so it kind of went, uh, it wasn't quite 73. It was cool water change. It was a, a drop in temperature. Heavy protein diet, 
drop in temperature, fresh water. That's why I did so many such big water changes. A lot of fresh water. That kind of, you know, prompted them to breed. I noticed the female was getting chubby around the midsection. You know, she has some love handles. In fact, I noticed that yesterday. So I thought to myself, yo, I got to get me something flat, the surface, for them to um, spawn on because everything's, every, everything read on the internet was they, they like um, breeding on flat rocks or um, like terracotta pot bottoms, you know, those, they're circular or terracotta pot. Anyway, I didn't get a chance to do that because they went ahead and spawned on the glass and they also dug out a hole, dug out a big old hole. You see that mound? Behind it is a deep cavern that they dug out. And uh, I kept looking in that cavern to see if I, there was any eggs, and I never saw any eggs. It didn't think to me to look on the glass right above the hole. So that's where it is. So the, the amazing thing about this is I'm used to breeding angels. Breeding angels, the eggs take five to eight days, you know, around a week or so, give or take a day, um, for the eggs to hatch. These guys... <laughs> two to three days in the eggs hatch, which is incredibly fast. All right, so let's talk with my homeboy, Fish Keeper Jamaica, because he breeds Jack Dempsey's outdoors all the time out there in Jamaica. Um, and and that, that two to three day thing, that just seemed odd to me. So I, I, I had to talk to somebody who actually did it. And what he was telling me was, it's two to three days before they become like wigglers. They're like a loose clump of, of fry, but they're not free swimming. It takes about, um, what he said was maybe like, oh, five days. For them to actually be in the water column swimming swimming and everything on their own so i have to move with a quickness maybe and i'll tell you why at the end of the video basically here's a breakdown the female is going to go drop her out of she's going to drop a little tube out drop eggs pop 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 pop, pop. then the male is going to come over and just skeet 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 on top of the egg <laughs> right and a viable egg is like a uh, tan, light, light brown, sandy color. If it's white, 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 like we imagine an egg should look like, it's actually dead. They, they need to be like a fleshy, tan color. Then after about two day, two to three days or whatever, that's crazy fast, um, you get a little, little fry come out. Now, when you got the fry, you're gonna have to decide, are you gonna let the parents raise them or are you gonna pull them out and, um, and uh, raise them in a separate tank. I do think you should raise them in a separate tank after a while, but at first, for the first week or two or whatever, you could probably let them chill with the parents until they get big enough. Then getting them out, me trying to get them out of here is going to be interesting. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. So I got a 20 gallon right underneath here behind this little thing where I'm going to go ahead and, and put them in. I think I'm going to use a siphon and, and like kind of chase them around the tank and suck them up like a vacuum into this bottom tank. Um, that's, I, I can't, I don't see myself swinging a net around there. At the same time, the male and the female are going to be uber aggressive and they're going to try and, um, uh, attack the net. Which, speaking of aggression, um, I noticed that the male's hiding. So I think the female put the wasabi on his butt and, uh, he's over there, you know, afraid to come out and play. If I were to go in there with the, with the fry, they would both attack the net. You can see her right now. She's just fanning the eggs, making sure, you know, they, they don't get fungus up by stale water. You know, they keep, keeps the water moving around them, pushing away any fungus. So the fry going to be mad hungry, right? So you, you have options, right? You do crushed up flake food. You do crushed up, like this, this high protein pellet stuff. You can crush this stuff up. You can get frozen brine shrimp, or you can hatch your own brine shrimp eggs, which I hate. I can't stand can't stand hatching brine shrimp. So I'm gonna go ahead and get me some frozen brine shrimp and I'm gonna crush this up into a powder or get some high protein flake food, put that in powder and, and this. I burped it. I burped. Did y'all hear that? Y'all didn't hear that. It was it was a silent kind of like. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do about the food. Here's the thing. I don't know if these eggs are gonna hatch. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'll tell you why. Um, like I said, this morning I was going to go get me some slate things. You get them from Home Depot. They're like two by ten inches pieces of slate. And I was just going to lay them all over the floors back there. They normally like, because um, as you see here, she did it in like a little cavey area. So they, they obviously like some cover. Um, at least these do. Because there were open areas that they could have did it, but they didn't. So um, I was going to get some slate, but too late. They already did, they already did their thing. 
but it's on the glass. And this male, this is the first time he's ever done this. So I don't think he was too good. His aim was a little off. Because you can see a lot of white eggs. Um, that means those eggs are dead. And unfortunately, if it was fungus, um, the fungus, if, if you don't move those eggs from the um, cluster of eggs there, that fungus will spread. So, um, being that they're not fuzzy right now, I'm thinking that it's just they weren't, they weren't fertilized properly. Because one, they're on the side instead of flat down like that. And two, he, he's just young. He don't, he don't know how to handle, he don't know how to handle his own stuff. You know, but the fact that I got them to spawn in a planted dirty tank is a big thing for me because there's a lot of people that said you can't do it. But you know what? I did. I said all oh, those fish were going to tear up the tank. No, they didn't. Yeah, they made one hole. I could live with that one hole. So stay tuned. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing um, follow-ups on this video. So if you, this is your first time visiting this channel, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Leave a like. Hit the notification bell so you get notified when I do put something out. Leave a comment. What do you think about this? Do you think I should do something different? I'm not. I'm gonna go with this. But can I add to this to um, um, ensure my chances of success for the next time? If nothing happens this time around, or even if it does happen this time around. Maybe I can do something better where I'll get a better yield. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm be honest with you guys. This is almost like the saddest part right here. This is sad. But, uh, all right. So this is the next day, right? She started digging up way more. But, and I thought that meant something good, right? But if you look, all those eggs are dead. Every one of them are white. And I saw some that are fuzzy. That means that, where is he? Where are you? Where are you, dude? Where are you hiding in shame? You should feel ashamed of yourself. Oh, there you go. Look, you should be hiding in shame. Because that means, that tells me that one, he's infertile. He's shooting blanks. Two, he's fertile, but he doesn't know what he's doing and he totally missed the mark every single shot. Or three, he wasn't even involved in the process and she laid eggs and he had absolutely nothing to do with it. He didn't even bother. So those are the three um, scenarios that I'm looking at. And she's still... See, here's the sad part. She's still fanning them if they're good, like, as if they're going to um, come back to life. They're dead, mama. They're all gone. I'm sorry to be the one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her kind of figure that out. I'm going to push all that sand back in there um, in the holes. And then I'm going to get those, uh, those slate... Um, those slate things that I was talking about and lay them all over the place so that hopefully if they do try it again she tries it on a downward type situation and he does a better job if he was even involved in the scenario or she was just I'm a modern woman I don't need no man to have a baby <laughs> I guess that's the scenario I don't know <laughs>